Now, Reed, you're quite the barbecue aficionado yourself. I make an attempt, yes. Here's your smoker. Yes, I smoke, I grill, use wood and charcoal. Great. Uh, but this looks like it's pretty good shape. It is. But you emailed that your other grill wasn't doing so good. It's not. Uh, let me show you that. Ah, uh, yeah. This is my old hand-me-down. Oh, look at that, the old red model. Looks like a, an old Mustang. What, 66? <laughs> Probably pretty accurate, yeah. I got this from my folks about a decade ago. Great. I've replaced everything on it. Uh, the biggest annoyance is the propane tank. I, I, it always wants to die right in the middle of a cook, and I have to go take it back up and get it refilled. And... So now you're looking for a new grill, and you're getting lazy, aren't you? I'm very lazy, yes. <laughs> well, I checked that you do have natural gas. I think it's time for you to get an upgrade. That sounds awesome. All right, here is your new grill. What do you think? This is a huge improvement. All right, it's stainless steel. Got a temperature gauge right here. Three burners inside. One, two, three. Spark igniter right here. And on the side, it has a burner right here that you can use to boil some clams or lobsters. You got them around here? Nah, not so much. We've got a lot of corn. Corn, it can work on corn, too. You don't know what you're missing, though. <laughs> All right, you'll notice underneath here, though, there is no propane tank and will never be. There's just this connection right here to natural gas. I like so in order for this to work, we have to start by running the gas line. All right, so new gas grills right here. And what I'd like to do is to run a gas line right along the outside of the building, if it's all right with you. Hey, absolutely. If I don't have to mess with propane anymore, I'll take right. it. Now, this is not a homeowner job. This is a licensed gas fitter, which I am. We'll need to file a permit. Well, it's a good thing you're here. That's right. So here's what you got. You got a gas line coming in right here from the street. Here's your shutoff valve. Comes up through a meter. Now, before we add on to this, we have to think about capacity. This line goes into the building. You heat the building. You got hot water and a stove. This line goes over to a gas fireplace in the chimney. So I look at the meter and I can tell that I can add the new gas grill to it. So where are we going to cut into it? Well, there's a plug right here. There's a cap right here. I think we're going to go right from here. So it starts by me turning off the gas. Okay, so now I just remove the cap. For conventional gas piping, I use threaded steel pipe and threaded fittings. I apply pipe dope and tighten them up with two wrenches. Okay, so now this is now level. What I did was I installed two elbows right here to be able to adjust and offset because this pipe was at an angle. Now, I could continue to run it the same way with threaded connections. Nowadays, they make the pipe in three foot, four foot, five foot lengths, and we could just assemble it. In the old days, I used to have to cut it and then add a die, put it in this power drive, this machine that would turn it, and I would thread each piece of pipe individually. That sounds like a lot of work. Right, well, nowadays, there's a new fitting connection I want to show you. This has got an O-ring connection right inside here. You see this? Mm -hmm. and it'll make a nice tight seal. You'll notice this is not threaded. And then once I get it onto the pipe, this tool will compress the outside of this so tight that it makes a gas tight seal. So look at that. That'll never leak. Pretty cool. So now we use the same method to make all the connections between here and the grill. With a special sanding attachment, I clean the outside of the pipe where the O-ring will seal. All right, Justin, here's our last connection. Here's our leg that's going to drop down. And you can see right here, I have a shutoff valve right here for, uh, for service. Then I have a T, and the connection we're going to make is this quick connect right here, sort of like connecting a garden hose. And the final piece you see right here is called a drip leg, and that's designed so if any rust was ever in the gas system in the steel pipe, it would settle here and not into the burner. All right, let me just make this last connection. There's one. Okay, one more. Okay, here we go. Now I can turn the gas back on and check for leaks with a soap solution. If there are any leaks, a big bubble would appear. Looks like we're good.
All right, Justin, everything is tested and gas is back on. It's almost time to cook, but I need you to get to know your new grill. So check this out. On the top, you've got the regular grates right here, but look at this. There's a circle right here, mm -hmm. and I can remove. So now, in the morning, you could come out here, and you could actually cook pancakes right there. Or bacon. Or bacon, perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, around lunch, you say, let's go Asian. Nice. And you're going to walk insert right here. Isn't that cool? Now, you know, you feeling like a little chicken later? How about this? Oh, wow. Pop this in, throw a beer can, chicken right here. The whole chicken comes here. This pops out of the way. And then, you know, later at night, it might be time for a little pizza. pizza. A little pizza storm right here. Okay? Oh, so what do you brilliant. think? I mean, you're never going to be inside the house ever again. Not at all. You had all kinds of tricks up your sleeve. <laughs> Absolutely. You ready to start cooking? Absolutely. All right, let's go. Let me turn it on.